Bayat and Kavi for having me. Um, my name is Marlene Zakabe. I'm the Business and Career Services Librarian with the Ottawa Public Library. I uh, currently work out of the Nepean Centre Point branch. Uh, the Ottawa Public Library, traditionally we have three business librarians. Uh, there's myself at Nepean Centre Point and uh, two of my colleagues, uh, one is at the main branch and one at the Cumberland branch. Currently, though, because of the pandemic, things have changed a lot. Uh, library services have changed quite a bit. Um, so I'm currently the only business librarian in my position right now, but that may change going forward in the future as we start to open up a little bit more. Um, but everything I talk about today is available, is going to be available online, um, although the library is not fully open at this time. Um, the resources that I'm going to discuss are all uh, available to you uh, free of charge uh, through the library's website. Uh, about, uh, about how to access everything and getting a library card. Um, so today what we're doing um, we're, this is the agenda, just uh, we're going to be talking about market research. Um, basically, what is market research? Uh, what's, uh, why is it important to do market research before you start a business or even when you uh, already have an established business? Um, and we'll go into depth talking about uh, two different types of market research, primary market research and secondary market research. So I'll define what they are and what the differences are, and we'll talk about the different resources available for both primary and secondary market research. So we'll start out just with a, a definition of what is market research. Uh, basically, it's uh, I have a definition up on my screen that's sort of an official definition. But it's basically uh, gathering information about your uh, competitors, your customers, and the industry that you're in. So your objective is to gather as much information about those three things in order to make important decisions about your business. So that is what market research is. And uh, you may question, why should we do market research? Uh, market research is important for understanding um, what it is that your business is, is doing and why. So you, you're at, you go out and you want to sell a product or you have a service that you're offering. Um, you need to find out whether uh, your customers actually want that product. Do people actually need the product or service that you're offering? Because if people don't need it, then it's going to be impossible to sell that product or service to them and you won't be making any money. So market research is you're going to be doing research to find out, is there a need? Do people want your product or service? Um, so that's what market research is. You're going to set out to see whether there is a need uh, for your product or service. And to basically find out, is it going to make money for you? Um, and it can also help you find new business opportunities if you've already got an established business and you may want to branch out into other things, you might uh, learn about new, some new uh, business opportunities. So the question is, when should you do market research? And obviously, uh, we always think about before you start a business, you want to um, you want to do your market research, you want to know that you've got a, a, a good plan, a good viable business, that you're going to have customers, that you're going to be able to make a profit. Uh, but you also want to continue to do market research even after you have an established business. Uh, for example, if you uh, want to introduce a new product or service in your business, that's really important to do the market research before you introduce a new product or service. Um, and to maintain your existing business uh, because trends change. Um, so although your business may be going well today, uh, you have to keep up with the changing trends in society um, and 
you, you need to keep up to date with what's happening in your industry. So, um, so you really, you need to do market research both before and while you're in business as well. You might have heard uh, different terms uh, like marketing and market research. Uh, they are not the same thing. Marketing is a all encompassing term. It's basically everything that a business does uh, to find and keep customers. So that includes things like advertising, customer support, community involvement, uh, pricing, sales strategy, and market research. So market research is just one part of marketing. So it's just a, a little piece of the pie if you look at it as a, a pie. You may, uh, when you're doing market research, basically you're looking to ask questions before you start your business. So what kind of questions might you be asking? So you want to find out, is there a need for your product or service? We talked about that a minute ago. Uh, who's going to buy your product or service? So who's your target market? Um, you want to establish who it is, like are you aiming to, um, uh, to target your market to women between the ages of 20 and 30? Um, or is your, market, market, or is your product or service aimed at the senior population? So you want to you figure out who your target population is. Um, what are your customers' requirements? What are they looking for in your product or service? How are you going to find your customers? Uh, what is the price that people are willing to pay? You don't want to overprice or underprice your products. Um, who else is providing your product or service? So that's essentially your competitors. How many competitors do you have? Is the market saturated? Are you looking to open, let's say you're looking to open um, a pizzeria, for example, and there are, the market is already saturated with um, too many pizzerias in the area that you're looking to open. That's something you want to study and find out about. Um, are you entering an industry that has an, is in an expanding market and, or one that is declining? Um, so you want to make sure that you're entering a market that's expanding rather than one that's declining. So if you're thinking of, for example, selling, um, opening up a retail location to sell watches, for example, you may be in an industry where people are not buying watches anymore. So this is something you need to find out uh, before you start your business. And uh, another question you may want to ask is, is there a profit margin? Are your costs too high where you were not going to be able to make a profit? You want to make sure that you're able to make a profit. So these are some questions to ask before you start your business. And market research can help you answer these questions. Uh, if you already have an established business, there's questions you may want to ask uh, about, about maintaining or growing your business. So for example, is there a new untapped market? So if you currently uh, have a hair salon, for example, um, maybe you want to add a, a nail grooming service. So um, that is an example of possibly an untapped market that you, you want to uh, uh, expand into. Are your customers ready for a new product or service? Um, are your current customers satisfied or do they have unmet needs? Or uh, is there something you can provide them? Um, are your prices in line with your competition? Um, are your competitors introducing new products or services? You want to stay ahead. You, you, want, you want to keep up with what's happening in your industry and, and what your competitors are doing to keep, uh, to keep ahead. Um, and are there any new marketing channels or new competitors um, in your space? So those are questions uh, for maintaining or growing a business that market research can help to answer. Um, now we'll talk about the two different types of market research, and that's going to be the focus of what we're talking about today. Um, there's primary market research and there's secondary market research. So primary market research is essentially um, data that's going to be collected by, um, by you. So you're going to go out and do the research yourself through different methods like interviewing people, running focus groups, uh, doing surveys. Those are some examples and we'll 
talk a little bit more in depth about those different techniques um, in a couple of minutes. So you are collecting that data and you're collecting it because you've got some questions you need answered um, and uh, you're going to go out and collect this yourself. And it's very focused. It's focused on your needs because um, the survey you do is going to be focused on the, the questions that you have that you need answers. Secondary market research, on the other hand, is where you're gathering information that already exists. So you're going to find the information in various reports or studies, uh, demographic information is another example of secondary market research. Um, but the, the difference from primary market research is it's not necessarily focused on your needs. So sometimes you can't find the answers you're looking for in the reports or studies that are already available. And that's when you need to turn to primary market research when you cannot find the answers. Uh, but sometimes you, you can use the secondary market research to, um, and you just need to analyze it for your own needs. Um, so there, there are two very different types of market research, and we're going to talk about both uh, in a little more detail. With the secondary market research, we're going to talk more about uh, the resources that are out there um, on the internet, as well as in the library that can help you uh, do your market research. So we're going to start first with um, primary market research. Um, so Different examples of primary market research is running questionnaires or surveys. Uh, another method would be interviewing people. Uh, you could also run focus groups. Uh, you, you can do some mystery shopping. Um, and you can also um, sample your product or service. So those are all examples of uh, primary market research techniques. So we'll talk about each one of these individually. So we'll start with questionnaires and surveys. Uh, surveys, how they differ between questionnaires and surveys. So surveys are short, maybe about five questions. Questionnaires are a little bit longer, between 10 and 15 questions. Um, you can do uh, your surveys in person, uh, by telephone, uh, by mail, or online. And there's pros and cons to each one. Uh, in person, you can have a longer survey um, and you might get some good feedback. Telephone and mail, on the other hand, you might not get a good response rate. Um, people may not want to answer your questions when you call them or they may not send back responses if you mail them out. Online is probably the easiest one to do um, and it's the most common, um, but you want to keep them short. You don't want to make your surveys do too long so that you lose the interest of the, um, of the participant. So see, I just have some guidelines here for doing questionnaires and surveys just to make it the right length. Um, I know when I've done surveys, sometimes if they've been too long, I've, I have given up on them halfway through. So make sure they're not too long and they are the right length. Make sure your questions are clear. Um, make sure you're, you're, you're not having leading questions. Um, start with your easy questions first and then get harder as you go along. Um, and then some, you know, include questions on age, gender, and any information that's significant to your target market. But, uh, this also pre-screens your respondents to make sure that you're getting your, your responses from your, your, your target market. Uh, question types in your survey or questionnaire, they can be multiple choice, they could be two choices, uh, you could have rankings or scales. Uh, you can have open-ended questions. And open-ended questions allow you to get more valuable information because people can write um, as much as they want. So th those are always good to put in there. And it's recommended that you just use a variety of question types. Um, I have a good website up on my screen here, uh, surveysystem.com. Uh, if you click on the research aids uh, tab in, on that website, it will give you all kinds of tips on uh, doing questionnaires and surveys. So it's a really good site to use um, 
to give you tips on how to develop your questionnaire or survey. And uh, if you're gonna do an online survey, which is the easiest uh, way to go, um, there's all kinds of services uh, for sur online surveys, Survey Mark Monkey probably being one of the most well-known ones. Um, it's easy to use, you can get a free account. It's limited though, if you're using the free account because you're limited to just 10 questions and 100 responses. Uh, but there's a su subscription available um, where you can have a lot more questions and more responses if you should you want to do that. Now SurveyMonkey is just one example of many online uh, survey uh, services. If you go to the uh, BDC website that I have up on my screen, bdc.ca, they have a list on their site of free and, or low cost online survey tools. So there's a whole list and they tell you what they include in there. Um, but you'll just have to, when you get to the BDC website, just Google or in their search box, uh, type in free and low cost online survey tools and they will come up and you can go through those and see the different services available for online surveys. The next uh, method of primary market research could be an interview, which is similar to a survey, except that you're interviewing people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, or you could be surveying more than one, one person, but one-on-one -on -one is probably best. Um, you don't want to make it too long. So the same thing with written surveys. Uh, you, you don't want to overwhelm your user uh, or your respondent. You want to make sure that it's relatively short, so we recommend 30 minutes or shorter. Um, offer an incentive for people to interview. Um, you can give them um, a, a free, maybe free sample of your product or service, um, or maybe offer them some food, uh, but uh, just offer an incentive for people to do the survey or the interview. Um, you can do it over telephone, you can do it in person, or as, you know, pandemic uh, style on the internet using Skype or Google Hangout. Um, and that gives you options to uh, serve or interview a wide range of people that may not be in your city. If your product or service is uh, over the internet or online, you may want to uh, interview a wide range of people. Uh, make sure you solicit unbiased opinions. So interview people, not your friends or family, but um, make sure you're you're interviewing your you know your customers or who your target market is going to be. Friends and family tend to be biased. They may answer questions the way they think you want to hear the answers. So just be careful about that. And you can also interview experts in your industry as well. So other business owners for their experiences um, is also important. Um, for any kind of interview or survey questionnaire, uh, make sure you pre-test your questions before you uh, start them. Um, because you don't want to start a survey or questionnaire and then find out that people aren't understanding your question once you've sent out a hundred of them. So pre-test them first with a few people, have people read them, comment on them, um, react to them. And then you can revise and retest your questions um, as needed as you get results back. Another method of primary market research is the focus group. So a focus group is where you get maybe 10 to 15 people together who are like-minded on a particular topic, um, who might be interested, people that might be interested in the product or service that you're offering. Um, and you just ask them um, questions, like um, usually open-ended questions, there's opportunity for people to talk, offer their opinions, um, you can, you have the opportunity to ask more probing questions. So focus group is really good. It allows you to get a lot of data from people, a lot of details uh, of their opinions on how they feel about different things. Um, so it's, it's a really good uh, primary market research technique. My lights have gone out here. I guess I just have to wave. There we go. Um, 
I have a really good uh, website up on the screen here, the Community uh, Toolbox Focus Group Guide. So if you want tips on how to run focus groups, it's a good website to, to look at. And there's also a book in the Ottawa Public Library's collection called Focus Groups, A Practical Guide for Applied Research. You could also borrow that as well if you're interested in focus groups and learning more about how to conduct them. Another technique for primary market research is um, mystery shopping. And mystery shopping is basically where you pose as a real customer to go into your competitor's um, uh, uh, business. Uh, and you go in to collect data on the products and services that they're offering, um, what prices they're charging, what their customer experience is like, what the ambiance is like. So you want to, it gives you an opportunity to collect as much uh, information as you can on your competitors. Um, and this gives you an idea of how you can offer your services, how you can improve your services, or maybe you learn um, that there's something that your competitor isn't offering that, that you can offer uh, that would be better. Um, so mystery shopping is really a good technique to use. It's a good primary market research technique. Um, private firms can do uh, mystery shopping for you for a fee. But you don't have to use a private firm. You can do it yourself. Uh, your friends can help you out with it. Your family can help you out with it. And it doesn't cost anything um, for you to do it yourself with your friends and family. Um, have them gather the data and report back to you on how their experience was at a, uh, a business that would be a competitor to yours. And the final. Um, primary market research uh, technique that I have up is the product or service sampling. So if you've got a working uh, version of your product or service, sample it. Uh, have people try it out and give you feedback. Um, and then you can tweak um, your product or service based on the feedback that you receive. So you can get some really good data from product or service sampling. Okay, so before we, uh, we're going to start talking about uh, secondary market research now, um, but before we uh, start secondary market research, I thought I'd maybe just check to see if anybody's got any questions uh, at this point. Okay, if there's no questions, I'll just continue on. Um, so for secondary market research, remember we talked about secondary market research being different from primary market research in that um, you're not going to be gathering the data. You're going to be using data that other people have gathered. So you're going to be looking at things like um, reports or studies that have been done by government agencies, trade associations, you can look at reports in newspaper articles, magazine articles, trade uh, journal publications. Um, you can look at market research reports that have been done uh, by various companies. Um, information like this can be found in various library databases. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth uh, in the second half of this session about um, all the library databases we have available at the Ottawa Public Library. Um, and the thing about secondary market research is that you have to analyze it for your own needs. So it's different from primary market research because with primary market research, you went out and you did the interview or you ran the survey and you collected the data that you needed. So you asked the questions that you wanted answers to and you went out and you got those answers. Our secondary market research, on the other hand, uh, may not give you all the answers you're looking for because the research may not have been done. The questions you're uh, looking ans for answers for may not be out there. Someone may not have studied it. Um, and you've got to just analyze that information for your own needs. So whatever is available, you've got to do the analysis. So where do you search for secondary market research information? So one question you can 
can ask yourself is who would be interested in gathering information on the topic that I'm interested in? Um, so it could be like a government agency that might uh, collect that information, or it could be a trade association that would collect that information. So just ask yourself that question, who's interested in gathering this information? And that may give you some answers. Um, the internet is a fantastic source of information for reports and studies, and it's where I always start um, when I'm doing market research, is searching on the internet to see what I can find there. Um, libraries are also another good source, and we're going to be talking about the, um, the resources available here at the Ottawa Public Library, but there's also the University Library as well. Auto, um, uh, University of Ottawa, Carleton University have access to databases that we don't have at uh, the Ottawa Public Libraries, but they've got some market research databases um, that you can tap into. Um, that would be really good. Um, uh, so libraries are also another good source. Government departments also do lots of research that could be helpful as well. Um, various agencies. And I think the most important of all uh, actually is trade and professional uh, associations. They are a source of fantastic data, depending on the industry. Um, some industries do, uh, their trade associations do great research. Um, a lot of them have their research available on their website. Sometimes it's free. Sometimes you have to be a member of the association. Um, Sometimes you can pay and get a report. So if you're not a member of the association, you may have to pay for a report. But they are a source of really good information. And I've found lots of free information on there as well. So always check with your trade or professional association um, uh, site for sure. So one uh, source of... Uh, secondary market research is doing internet market research. So just scanning the internet. So scanning social media for trends and customer comments. So for example, if you're looking to open a restaurant, there's so many customer comments on, you know, restaurants, all kinds of businesses where people will comment on the, on uh, the services that they receive. So study those. Look at what your what customers are looking for in your industry. Um, look at social media, see what the trends are, um, study and analyze your competitors' websites. That is a source of uh, tons of information, what your competitors are doing, how they price their products, um, how they market their products or services. So make sure you study your competitors' websites. Um, search blogs in your industry. Um, that's also an important source of information for keeping up to date of trends and how things are changing in your industry. Um, there's a good website called searchengineguide.com. Um, so if you've got a website and you, you know, want to learn more about search engine optimization and keyword searching and how people search for information, um, searchengineguide.com is a really good site that uh, talks about um, uh, searching um, uh, market, searching um, marketing and search, it's called search marketing for a small business. So definitely have a look at that website. Uh, another source of secondary market research is uh, information is demographic information. So it's basically you trying to learn more about your potential customers. So looking at population density, age, sex, income, education, um, household characteristics, how people spend their money, um, trends and projections into the future, how people shop, uh, consumer expenditure data, um, you, that is all demographic information. Uh, demographic information could be important, for example, if um, your business, let's say you're opening um, a yoga studio and you're targeting your yoga studio at uh, women between the ages of 20 and 49 and you want to know where a good site to open your studio would be, you want to look at demographic information for that. 
you want to see where women between the ages of 20 and 49, for example, if that's your target market, where do they live in the city? And that can give you some good idea of where you might want to um, establish your yoga studio. Or for example, if you're um, starting a cleaning service, for example, and you want to target um, uh, affluent two-income families, where do they live in the city? Where should you focus your uh, marketing efforts. So demographic information could give you a lot of information about where you need to set up, where you can set up, or how you should be marketing your services. Uh, business information is also uh, another source of uh, secondary market research. So it's uh, uh, finding out about your competitors and uh, who are your competitors. Um, where are they located? What's their size? What are their sales? Um, so studying that is really important. Don't forget about your indirect competition though. So your direct competition are people that do business in a, have a business that is, is like yours or very similar to yours, whereas indirect competition is it's, um, it's another method of selling or other products or services, but it, in a similar category. So I, as an example, um, if you're a fine dining restaurant serving Italian cuisine, for example, um, your direct competitors would be other fine dining restaurants serving Italian cuisine, maybe serving a different cuisine, but still a fine dining restaurant. So that would be your direct competitor. But don't forget about your indirect competitors who could be things like um, um, uh, grocery stores that are selling ready to serve meals or fast food restaurants or other restaurants that maybe are not fine dining. Um, so they're your indirect competitors. They are selling a similar service to yours, but not in direct competition to you. Um, but it's filling a need, uh, the need of someone to go out to eat. They can either go to your fine dining restaurant, but they may choose to go to a fast food restaurant or another restaurant. So they are your indirect competition. And business information could also be uh, for business to business as well. So learning more about um, your customers, other businesses, if you are a business to business, you would be wanting to learn about um, other business, your other business customers. Um, industry analysis, so learning about your industry. So not only your competitors, you also want to know as much as you can about your industry and keep on top of what's happening in your industry. Um, you want to learn about um, how big your industry is. So how many companies are in it? Where do they sell? What are the average sales, the growth? What are the trends in your industry? Where's your industry going? Uh, best practices, um, regulations. Not all industries are regulated, but some are highly regulated. So for example, the food industry is highly regulated. So you wanna learn about the regulations for your industry. So it is very important to, to analyze your industry. So next, uh, our next section is, we're gonna look at um, free sources for market research. Uh, for secondary market research. Um, you can pay for market research reports. There's lots out there. You can do an internet search and you will get all kinds of market research reports that cost you $1,000 and up. Um, but what I'm going to focus on today is not that, but what are the free resources for market research, for secondary market research. And there is a lot out there that you can tap into but it does take a little bit of work and a little bit of digging. Um, so it will require that, um, but there's lots of stuff. So I'm going to get into all the different sources that we have here at the library, as well as on the internet that can be helpful for secondary market research. Um, any questions before I uh, start this second part? Okay, so if there's no questions, I will uh, go on. Um, so one of the, one very important website for secondary market research information is Statistics Canada. 
Um, it's filled with data uh, that can be useful uh, for your business and for making decisions for your business and for market research. Um, I have to tell you that though that Stats Canada is not the easiest website to use. Um, it does take a lot of practice, um, but I'll take you into the site and just do like a quick search uh, just to, to give you some idea of how it works. Um, but there is a lot of data there and it can be difficult to get at. Um, if you do try it out and you have difficulties, you can always uh, get in contact with me um, and I can see if I can help you out with it. Um, but let's go into the site. Um, going into st the Statistics Canada site. So, do you see the Statistics Canada site on the um, up on your screens? Yes, we can see. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, do I need to expand it? Are you just seeing a small portion of it? I can see the full, full, the screen. full screen. You can see the full screen. Okay. Uh, now it's full. Yeah. Now it's better. Okay. I just opened up the full screen. Okay. Here's the Stats Canada website. Now Statistics Canada, a lot of people think it's, it covers all kinds of topics and you can get statistics on everything. But that's not the case. Um, they only collect data in certain areas. So for example, if you want to know how many pets there are in Canada, um, they don't collect that kind of data. Um, so for data like that, often you'd have to go to your trade association. They may collect data on that sort of thing. Um, but what you can find in Statistics Canada are cons is consumer expenditure data or retail sales data. Um, so you can find out how people spend their money or how much money they spend, let's say, on pet food. So if you're going to be selling pet food and you want to know um, how much money people spend on pet food, um, you can find something like that in Statistics Canada, potentially. Uh, or what retail sales of pet food are across Canada, as an example. So uh, just to let you know that, you know, not everything is there. Uh, uh, they don't collect data on everything, but uh, there is still some useful data there. And the other thing Statistics Canada does is they've got the census data as well. Um, so that's another important part. Um, but I'll show you some other sites where it's a little bit easier to get census data um, from some, if, especially if you're only looking at Ottawa. Um, I've got some Ottawa specific sites that give you demographic data where you don't have to bother with the Statistics Canada website. But if you're looking across Canada, for example, um, it would be good that you might have to go to the Statistics Canada site. Um, so from Statistics Canada, um, I recommend probably just going and doing a subject, starting with a subject search. I'll just click on subjects. And then you'll see a wide range of subjects to choose from. Um, and I find with market research, um, the ones I use the most are under families and households because under there I can find, um, that's where I find the consumer expenditure data and spending patterns. Um, and retail and wholesale data is also another good one. But it really depends on what your business is. So you might find, you know, if, um, you're a food business, maybe agriculture and food might give you what you're looking for or transportation. So it really depends on what your, your business is. Um, let's look at uh, families and holes, households. And from here you get um, all kinds of studies that you can look at here. So I have the tab is on all uh, right now. But if you want just specifically data, you can click on the data tab. Um, or if you're just looking for analysis, you can click on the analysis tab. And then on the left hand side here, you'll see some broad subject areas. And the one that I use a lot is the households. 
because under households is where you get the household survey. And um, I'll just scroll down. I'm going to go to the data tab here and see if I can find a survey of household uh, spending. I may have to search it. So let me go back up to the top and I'm in my search box. And the survey of household spending. And I'll click on the tables. Household income. No. So you see how difficult it is to search Statistics Canada? It's not easy. So I wasn't able to find what I was looking for uh, right off the bat there. We'll go back. So I'm on my data and it may not be popping it up here. So what I find is if I cannot find what I'm looking for in Statistics Canada, when I'm searching the site, I'll just check this page. No, what I'll do is I'll do, a, I'll go and do a Google search. So let me do a Google search on um, the survey of household spending. And there it, it pops up right away survey of household spending and I can click on it and the last survey they did is 2017 so that is the most recent data that, that is available and then when you get to this page you want to click on tables and then there's different um, they look at household spending in different ways so households uh, detailed food spending so how much people spend on food um, and then uh, household spending in general, and then by household type, by income quintile. So it depends what you're looking for by age. But generally I look at you know, household spending in general. So click on that one. And then I've got some data and you can see here, they have broad categories of what people spend their money on between 2013 and 2017. Um, so you may be interested if you're opening a restaurant, food purchased from restaurants as an example, but oh, there's all kinds of um, uh, topics here. Now you can, uh, get more detail. So you see these are quite broad. So for example, um, I saw the one on, um, let's say personal care. Let's say I want more detail on that. So I'm going to go up to the top and then what you would do is you're going to click on add remove data. And that's going to open up, um, a screen where you can actually, um, get more details. So you can search all of Canada or you can select your province. I'll leave it on all of Canada for now. And then under household expenditures here, I can select and open up total expenditure. And then I want to look at total current consumption and open that um, menu. And you see how it opens up uh, all kinds of topics. So if I'm interested in personal care, a personal care product, I'll open that up and I get even more um, in depth. So I can look at personal care products or personal care services. I'll try products. And if I'm selling, let's say I'm selling a body soap and I just want uh, data on body soap. So I have to uncheck all these other boxes and I'll do that by just selecting all items and then unselect all items and that unchecks everything and then I can select body soaps and then once I've selected body soaps I can apply and I can look at the data 
So now we're looking at all of Canada, uh, how much has been spent on body soaps from 2013 to 2017. So you can see what the trends are. So in 2013, it was 44. I'm not sure, somewhere it'll tell you if this is in thousands or what. Um, it's probably in thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars, I'm not sure. Or it's probably $44 maybe per year per, per household is likely what it is. Um, and then, uh, so you can look at the trends of what's happening over the, the last couple of years. And you can play around, you can play around with the dates um, that would be under reference period. So if you want to go further back, you can go back to 2010 if you'd like and apply and then get the 2010 date, uh, the 2017 data. So it's relatively stable, uh, it looks, for body soaps. But that's how you use Statistics Canada. So it, it isn't the easiest thing to use and, and you do really need a lot of practice with it. Um, so if you do have any questions ever, I uh, just um, contact us at the library. I'll be giving you uh, my email and um, uh, the library's email and phone number to call should you ever need any help. I'm going to close this tab and... Sorry, can I ask a question now if you don't Yes, mind? certainly. Go ahead. Um, I was just wondering how did um, how does uh, Stats Canada um, obtain this information like from from where just from the businesses in the area like uh, how much yep. they spend on on uh, each of the items? Yeah, they will. They also survey households. They send out surveys. Um, they will also get data from businesses for retail sales. Um, uh, census data, well the census data they collect every, I think it's five years, uh, but that is just for demographic uh, information. But if you're thinking more about the consumer expenditure, like the household spending and the uh, retail sales, yes, they do survey people and they do it every, uh, you saw that the household spending survey was only last done in 2017. So they, they don't do it every year, but every couple of years they will do it. Um, they'll just send out, they'll sample, send out surveys to a, a representative sample of people and get the results that way. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Okay, so I'm going to, I have to get back into my presentation right now. Um, So, okay, I think this is it. So is my screen, my stats can screen back on? Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I'll go to the next slide. Okay, so the next slide is the city of Ottawa also has um, statistics on their website as well. They have some Ottawa demographic and economic information. Um, I'll go to that site as well uh, to show that to you because you can get uh, demographic data by ward. Um, so if you're you know, looking for information on different wards in the city, like their, you know, what types of housing there is, the incomes, the ethnic origins, uh, education levels, you can get that all on the City of Ottawa site. So when you get to the City of Ottawa site, uh, do you see the City of Ottawa site? Or do I have uh, to do a new yet. share? Not yet, I have to do a new share. Okay, yes. is it up now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So from the City of Ottawa site, you have to go to, it's not very intuitive, it's under City Hall. And it's on my slide. Um, it'll, it'll give you the, what you need to click on. City Hall, get to know your city. And statistics and economic profile. And then once you get to this page, you'll see there's a uh, statistics. You just click on that and learn more. 
And this is where they have census data here as well. So you can look at the 2016 census and the 2011 census. They've also just got some quick facts. Um, but the ward data is found, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere here. I'm going to click on the 2016 census data, to learn more. Try that. Yes, so once you click on the 2016 census data, you'll see that the ward profiles are here. And it takes you to another website. You have to click on this open data website um, right here. And it is. They've changed the way the site looks. Microsoft Excel, because they do have it in an Excel file. I know that. There's another link to that national, oh, that's a national household survey. So it might be this OD data. Let me click on that and see if that's it. or view metadata, let's try that. No, that's not it. We'll try the OD data. No, nope, it's not there. I don't think it's this either. No, that takes you right to StatsCan. Ah, it's the download button here. I missed that. There it is. And then we'll open it. Okay, and there you go. So this is the uh, ward profiles uh, here. Um, and you can see the different wards along the top here. So they've got all their wards. And then down on the left hand side is all the demographic data. Um, oh, we, we can't see those data. We can't see it. Oh. I have to screen share it. Yes. <laughs> New share. Oh, okay, right here. Let's try this. How about now? Yes, now. Yes, okay. So, um, yes, so as I was saying, uh, along the top here are all the different wards that you can scroll through. Um, and then along the left hand side here is all the, um, the demographic data that you uh, might be interested in looking at by ward. So that's, um, so that's how you get to that. It's a little complicated, but we, we got it. <laughs> so I'm gonna close this screen. And I have to go back. All right. So somehow I've lost my, um, I'll just have to go back to where we were in the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, okay.
Okay, do you have the City of Ottawa slide back up? Uh, yes, we have. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna to go to the next one. Um, the next slide is, this is also has data, uh, this website, uh, Ottawa Insights, is another um, website that's got uh, data on it for the City of Ottawa. So uh, you can see the different topics, uh, basic needs, standard of living, economy, employment, health and wellness, um, and so on. Um, and then there's a general demographics as well. I'm not going to go and look at this one. It's a really easy website to look at. Uh, their data is uh, very easy to read and access. Um, but this is a, just another to show you another source of information for uh, demographic data for Ottawa as well as other data for Ottawa. The next site is the Ottawa Neighborhood Study, and uh, this is also a really good site, uh, kind of similar to the City of Ottawa's website with the ward profiles. This one also goes by neighborhood rather than by ward. Um, and you can see on my slide some of the different neighborhoods that are included. Um, it just gives you an example. Um, also, not a difficult uh, website to use, fairly easy, um, I'll, uh, I'll open it up. It's based on um, uh, a census, the, the latest 2016 census information, and they also get their data from other sources as well. Um, I think in Veronics as well as another source of information, but when you I have to do a new share here so you can see it. Um, do you see it now, the Ottawa Neighborhood Study? Yes, we have. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So this is what the website looks like. Um, to get the different uh, neighborhoods, you click on Profiles. And then you get all the different um, neighborhoods in Ottawa. So uh, I'm in Center Point now. If I'm interested in looking at the Center Point neighborhood, it gives you a little description of Center Point. I'll explore it. And a little bit more of a description here about the neighborhood. And then under data to show, um, this is the data that they have so that you can scroll through and decide what kind of data you want to look at uh, for, uh, for this neighborhood. Um, there's general demographics. If we're interested in demographics, there's another menu that will open up and you can look at things like population and age, median age, marital status, family structure, and so on. And what's interesting about it, I'll click on population and age, is it compares to the city of Ottawa. So if, um, you know, if your business is targeting seniors, for example, um, you'll see that Center Point has 920, uh, 985 seniors, and then it compares to the city of Ottawa as a whole, um, 132,335 seniors. So for every um, data point, it gives you a comparison of uh, that neighborhood to the whole city of Ottawa. So it's kind of a nice site to go through. Um, and they just don't, it's not only demographics, uh, there's all kinds of stats in here, like how many parks there are, um, how far to the nearest um, food, um, uh, like grocery stores, for example, how many grocery stores there are. So there's all kinds of data. It's um, really interesting to explore it. Um, just have a look and just explore to see what kinds of information you can get. So arts and culture, standard of living, community and belonging, there's all kinds of things here. All right, so I'm going to go back to, um, I'll go back to my presentation now. Okay, so we're back to uh, my slides. Yes. The next do you see that Locate Ottawa now? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So Locate Ottawa is another um, Ottawa-specific site where you can get uh, demographic information, consumer expenditure information, and business listings uh, by neighborhood. Um, 
I'm going to click on and open it. It's not the easiest site to use, not very well laid out. I'll do a new share here. Pull this up on the screen. Okay, so do you see that Locate Ottawa now? Yeah, I can see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so this is what Ottawa uh, Locate Ottawa looks like. Um, you'll see across the top here uh, things like uh, buildings, sites, businesses, communities. I use the communities all the time for market research. You click on communities. And when you click on communities, it opens up this menu here, and then you have to select your city. Even though there's only one option, Ottawa, you still have to select it and search. Okay. And then when you do that, it opens up a little menu here. So you can see, look at the labor force in Ottawa. You can look at Ottawa demographics, consumer expenditures, occupation data, and businesses. So I'm going to look at consumer expenditures. Um, because it's a really good one to for for market research. So when I click on consumer expenditures, I get here the consumer expenditures report uh, for the whole city of Ottawa. So things uh, like food, food purchase from restaurants, uh, shelter. So how much people spend on on shelter, um, personal care. How much is spent on personal care items? You'll notice a lot of these topics are very similar to the survey of household spending that we looked at for Statistics Canada. So that's where they're pulling this data from, uh, from Statistics Canada, um, as well as Environix um, as well. Um, but uh, yeah, there's all kinds of um, spending data here that you can look at. So let's say we were interested in, you were um, let's say starting a business selling pet food and you wanted to know um, how much people spend on pet food so this gives you the data for the city of ottawa so um, pet food is 345 dollars spent per household per year and then if you want to look at it by neighborhood you can click on pet food and it's going to open up this map here and they call it a heat map and in this map um, you're going to see all kinds of data values here um, and then you can you'll see the dark red is the most spending versus the very light yellow is the least amount of spending and then what you want to do is you want to zoom in on this map and the more you zoom in on this map you will start to see these colors uh, start to emerge and you have to zoom in a fair bit to start to see um, the different colors on the heat map there you go see how it's now loading and you see how you have you know some orange and some yellow and some red so you can look at various neighborhoods to see well I'm looking at pet food right now that should tell me here yeah my data point is pet food so the most spending on pet food which would be the dark burgundy color here is um, in this neighborhood here so you can zoom in on the map to see a little bit more of where that neighborhood is so that's around the 416 it's around the 416 highway Let's zoom out a bit. So you can play around with it. You can look at the entire city. So you start to lose data if you zoom out too much. So you really do have to be in a little bit more. Yeah, there I go. So I can see a little bit more on the map now. So that's how you use a Locate Ottawa. Um, you can also, so consumer expenditure data, but you can also look at demographic data in the exact same way using this heat map. Um, and you can also search businesses on this site as well. So if you're searching for your competitors, um, you can click on the businesses tab here. 
And again, on the side here, um, you have a little menu and you can search for, um, if you know NAICS codes, I don't know if you are familiar with NAICS codes, but if, if you are familiar with NAICS codes, you'll know that you can put a, a number in here for your industry. But if you're not, just use the uh, more filters here and that will open up a menu of uh, industries and then you can find your industry. So if you're in the construction industry, you can open up you get from that. Um, you can get the address. I think if you click on the pinpoint here, um, it'll tell you the name of the company and um, actually it doesn't, this one doesn't have an address, but has a postal code and is in Greeley. Um, but I'm going to show you another source later for searching for businesses um, but that I think is better than Locate Auto. What, but you still just know that you can use this to search for businesses as well um, because no one source is comprehensive. Sometimes you have to use multiple sources to get a, a good picture of what's out there. So just know that it is available there. Okay, I'm going to go back to my presentation now. Okay, so we're back to my slides. The next one that I have um, we're going to talk about business directories now. So we just looked at, for example, Locate Ottawa as a potential business directory, but the other one I wanted to show you is called Reference Canada. Um, and it's an excellent um, business directory that we have at the Ottawa Public Library. It's online, so you don't have to come into the library for it. You can access it through our website, and I'll be showing that to you in a few minutes. Um, we also, in the library here, we have something called Scott's Directories. So if you're looking for lists of manufacturers or distributors, we have this print directory, but we only have right now the 2019 edition of that. Um, and they're no longer printing it. So uh, going forward, we're not going to be getting um, up-to-date um, uh, copies of Scott's directories, but I just want to mention that Carleton University has a subscription to Scott's directories online. Um, so you can go to Carleton University, even though you may not be a student there, um, you can get a guest pass to use uh, their online directories on site um, and their online resources. And Scott directories is one of them that they have there. Um, so if you do need specifically manufacturers or distributors, it's an excellent source. Uh, you can get it at Carleton. Now, of course, now with COVID, things are a little bit different. There, so you may have to wait until um, the universities open up and libraries start to open up again, which I don't know when that will be. But uh, for the future, know that that is available to you. Um, there's also online uh, directories as well. I list them here that you could visit, that you can search businesses for. They are subscription directories, um, but most of them will give you some free access. You just won't have full free access unless you pay for a subscription, but you still can get some information. Uh, it's just limited. And then, of course, for free on the internet, so things like Yelp and BizLocal, Yellow Pages, just doing a Google search will give you uh, business names, uh, all kinds of businesses. So the, don't forget about the internet. Um, the next site I'd like to talk about is Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada. Uh, that is a Government of Canada website. Lots of information for business is available on this site. Um, I'll just do, I'll take you to that quickly. Do a new share. Okay, do you see it up on the screen, innovation? Science? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go into the English uh, side of it. 
And then from here, they've got tons of information for business. So if you're starting a new business, uh, click on business and industry here. Lots of information uh, for starting a business. So things on business taxes, permits and regulations, intellectual property, uh, business support, how to sell to the government, all kinds of things. Um, business grants and financing, people are always interested in whether there's grants available. I can tell you there's limited amounts of grants, um, but there is lots of information on financing. So check out that link for, for that, for business grants and financing. Um, if you're going into an import-export business, there's all kinds of information on importing, exporting here. Um, research and business intelligence is also a good site. I have some slides um, on that as well that we'll get into um, the financial best benchmark specifically. Anyways, just to let you know, this is a really good site uh, for business information when you're starting a business. I'm going to go back to my slides. Um, Okay, so uh, we're going to go to the next slide and that's the financial performance data and that is available, that is through the um, Innovation Science and Economic Development website. Um, basically what it is, is you can get financial performance data on a variety of industries um, to find out how your business is performing compared to other businesses. It's also useful if you're writing a formal business plan and you need to show financial data, like you need to know how much rent is going to cost you or how much your inventory is going to cost or um, your labor. Um, you can look at other industries. It'll show you what, on average, industries pay for rent, uh, for their supplies, for all kinds of things. Um, and it can show you also how these, how many of the businesses in this industry are profitable versus how many are not profitable. Um, again, I can look at it really, we can look at it really quickly just to show it to you so you just have some idea of what it does. Um, I'll do a new share. Okay, is it up on your screens? Yes, it is. Financial performance data. Okay, wonderful. Yes. So from here, um, you can create a report. I'll just go under create a report. Um, and then you plug in the information you're looking for. So if your revenue range is between 30K and 5 million, we'll leave it at that. You can look at businesses across Canada or, or by province. We'll leave it at Canada. Um, incorporation status, you can designate uh, either incorporated or unincorporated. I'll leave it on all businesses. You can look at data by total revenue or by profit margin. I'll just leave it on profit margin and we'll look at it by percentage. The next thing you want to do is search for an industry. So let's say it's a restaurant that we're opening. We'll search that. If you have the NAICS code, you can plug that in. If not, just do a keyword search like I did. And there it is. So uh, full service rest. So you can look at either full service restaurants or full service and limited service eating places. I think limited service is fast food. Um, but let's say we're a, a full service restaurant and I want to look at the data for this full service restaurant. I select it and then I'm going to click on create a report. So now it's showing me data, uh, financial performance data for uh, full service restaurants. Um, and then we can look at, so in this industry, it's showing you on average, how much these, um, these restaurants pay in wages and benefits, for example, how much uh, their uh, purchases, materials and subcontracts are, what their operating expenses cost them, um, labor and commissions, their repairs and maintenance, how much they pay for rent, um, how much they pay on interest for their bank charges, their professional business fees, and so on, insurance. Um, so you can get all kinds of data, and it's especially useful if you're writing a business plan and you don't know where to start with uh, your financials. 
Um, also be aware of the next, the call, they divide it up by quartiles. So you could look at from bottom to top quartile. So bottom quartile would be the lowest earning businesses. So if you're just starting out, you may want to compare yourself to a bottom quartile business that's not earning so much versus the top quartiles are those restaurants that earn up um, the top amount. Um, anything you don't understand, you can click on and they'll give you a definition. If it's like underlined and highlighted in blue, you can click on it, click on sales of goods and services, and I'll get a definition of what that means right here. Uh, new share, sorry, I have to share that for you. So there, when I clicked on sales of goods and services, uh, I have a definition of what they mean by that. So anything you don't understand that's underlined, you can always um, look at that. Um, so that was just a quick look at that financial performance data, just to give you some idea of what type of data is there. And I'm going to go back to my slides. So do you see the financial performance data slide up? Yes. Okay. Okay, so the next slide I have up is for the Canadian Importers Database and Trade Data Online. So if you are in the import export business, this is uh, these are two really excellent websites uh, to look at. Um, the Canadian Importers Database will give you um, importers for different products. Um, so if you want to know who your competitors are, it will show you who the major in importers are for that particular product. And that gives you an idea of how many competitors you have and who are your competitors. Um, but I should mention it's only major importers that it will show you. It's not going to show you any um, really small importers. So it is just only for major importers, but it can give you some idea. Um, the trade data online is uh, also it imports and exports all kinds of data on um, how much is imported and exported between Canada and various countries. Tons of information on there. Um, it's rich with data. You could look at the top uh, 25 uh, in, um, exports. Um, you can look at, for example, how much, you know, your whatever product that you're interested in exporting, if you're exporting maple syrup, what are the top countries that we export maple syrup to, for example, it will give you the, the top countries and how much we export um, and, and so much more. Um, so if you are into imports and exports, you definitely want to have a look at these sites, these two sites. Um, my next slide is uh, FedDev Ontario. That is um, another Government of Canada website that has information for small business. So all kinds of information to help you get your business up and running. Uh, I will go to this site because it can't open it. Okay, well, well, we'll skip that. I'll just tell you it's got in it, you know, business guides, um, you know, taxation, hiring of employees, uh, importing, exporting, uh, just information on uh, for small business on what you need to know to start your small business. And they have all kinds of how to guides like how to start a restaurant, how to start a uh, daycare. Um, so for about a dozen different businesses, they'll give you um, how to start. Um, but the one thing I really want to point out is they have a free secondary market research help. And I have the phone number up here on my slide. You can phone them and they can do some free secondary market research for you. Um, so definitely take advantage of this service. It doesn't cost anything um, and it could give you some useful information. So if you're looking for, you know, associations, 
uh, in your industry, they can give you a list of associations. Or if you're looking for um, market research, I believe they also have market research databases where they can send you information from. So um, definitely take advantage of, of that service that they provide. And they can also answer day-to-day uh, -day small business startup questions as well. So you can just call them um, about uh, things like you know hiring of employees if you have a question about the legalities of that so they are a good source and again that's a government of canada website um, even though it's it's just ontario specific but uh, it is uh, put out by the government of canada um, we'll talk now about ottawa public library services um, so all our services, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, are absolutely free to residents of Ottawa. You do need a library card to access um, a lot of uh, our services, uh, especially the ones I'm going to show you in, in a few minutes, uh, the databases, the online databases that we have. Um, you will require a library card for them. Um, you can um, Come into the library now. We are open uh, for limited services. Right now we're open for holds pickup where you can pick up your holds, but you can also come in and get a library card. Um, starting on August 17th, we will be opening up uh, for browsing as well. So you can come in and browse, um, but um, that's not starting till August 17th. But for a library card, you can definitely come in and get one. You can also sign up for a temporary card online through our website. Uh, and if you do that, um, you'll just call our main phone line and I think then they can give you access with a temporary card to access uh, the databases um, that we have on our website. So I think they do need to do something to your temporary card to give you, to allow you to have access. Um, so phone the library. If, with your temporary card, you find that you can't uh, access the online resources that I show you today, uh, or just come into the library and get a full library card, because you do with a temporary card. Uh, the temporary card really is only temporary. I think it's only good for six weeks, and then you, you have to get a full library card after that. Uh, but library card is free if you live in the city of Ottawa or pay taxes in the city of Ottawa, so no charge for it. Uh, we have some business reference collections at the main and the P and Center Point branches, but really over the years that has gotten smaller and smaller just because everything so much is online now. We're moving more online. There isn't too, too much uh, in print uh, right now anymore, uh, but we do have a few things in our business uh, collections. Um, normally, under you know good circumstances, pre-pandemic, we ran workshops, business work shops at various uh, branches throughout the Ottawa Public Library. Those are on hold right now. Um, but we do, we have been running online uh, programs and workshops um, running through Zoom uh, on different topics. We just haven't had any business specific ones and I don't know if there's any fall ones in the works. I don't believe there are, but keep your eye out on our website. Um, there may be something coming up possibly in the future. Um, but once we get back to normal, uh, hopefully one day soon, we will, we will have uh, everyone back in our branches with uh, live workshops uh, in person, uh, hopefully one day soon. Um, the one-on-one -on -one business consultations, uh, that again is something that has stopped since the pandemic. Uh, I used to do lots of consultations with small business owners or people who were looking to start a small business could meet one-on-one -on -one with myself or one of my colleagues at one of the other branches, Maine or Cumberland. Um, and uh, basically I would just go through all the different sources that they could use for their market research. Uh, just very much like I'm doing in this workshop here, but I tailor it specifically to the industry that you're in. Um, so if you're opening a restaurant, I would talk about all the different sources, market research sources that would be helpful for you um, for opening a restaurant. Uh, but that is unfortunately on hold right now. Um, but if you have questions, you can email them. I'll have the email up at the end of the slides. Certainly email us 
um, and then um, it will be forwarded to me and I can answer via email. I can't meet one-on-one, -on -one, but I can certainly um, send you some information via email. Um, online resources through our website, which I've just been talking about, and we'll look at some of them in a moment. And on our website, we ha also have a business services page where we have lists with library staff recommendations for business books that you may be interested in as well. So explore uh, the library's website. There's lots on our website. So have a look at it. Uh, look at the businesses page. We have a page for uh, business services um, and all the resources that we have up on there. Um, and we do have lots of books in our collection on market research um, and I have just some of them listed here up on our screen. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more on doing market research, you can check, uh, check out any one of these books, just uh, search them in our catalog and um, put a hold on them and you can get them and have a look at them. Um, the next slide here is uh, showing you some of our online resources. So we'll now look at a couple of online resources that are available to you, free with your library card. Um, and we'll look at them one by one. Gale eBooks, Reference Canada, lynda.com we won't be looking at, but what that is is it provides um, videos, uh, video courses on a wide variety of topics and business is one of the topics um, that they have video courses in that you can look at and the newspaper collections that we have online. So the first one we're going to look at is Reference Canada and this is a business directory. This business directory uh, lists businesses across Canada. So I'm going to go to the uh, link here. And I'll um, hmm. okay. So uh, you should see the reference Canada up on your screen now. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Let me try that again. There it is. Yes. Yes, okay, wonderful. So this is Reference Canada. The little blurb here says it's a directory of 2.1 million uh, Canadian company profiles. Uh, so I'm gonna just click on it to go into it. This is where uh, if you're doing this at home through our website, you will need your library card. Uh, you have to put in your library card number to gain access to this, um, to this resource. And then once you've got access, this is what you're going to see. Uh, and you're going to want to click on this top Canadian businesses start search. So I'm going to click on that. And this is the quick search page. So if you're searching for a particular company and you know the company name, you can type it in here and search. But usually uh, we're using this database to search for either our competitors. So you want a list of competitors or your customers. If you're a business to business and you're looking for other businesses to sell your products to, um, you need a list of companies. So we're gonna you do an advanced search. So normally you are gonna be doing an advanced search. So I click on advanced search and then it opens up um, on the left-hand side here, um, some filters that I can use to do my search. And usually I will use uh, the business type filter and you're gonna do a keyword search. Um, and then here you can type your keyword of the, the industry you're in or the, the, the type of business that you're opening. So if, if um, you're gonna be opening a restaurant, let's search restaurant and search. And then it opens up my results. And then I have to go through and find the, the result that's closest to the type of business I am opening. So if I'm opening a full service restaurant, I need to find something related. Well, here's one that's just restaurants in general. So I'm gonna select that one. 
You see when I click on it, it goes into my selected box here, restaurants. And then um, I'm interested in restaurants only in the Ottawa area because this directory search is all of Canada. So I don't want to really search all of Canada. I just want to know the restaurants in Ottawa. I can search by city, use the city filter, or I can use the census metro area filter. Census metro area will search all of Ottawa Gatineau. City will search Ottawa on its own. Um, but if you want Nepean or Canada or Gloucester, you have to search those separately. So I like to use census metro area. You could also search by um, postal code as well. So if there's just a very small area that you're looking at, you can also do a postal code search. So let's, uh, maybe we'll just do city and I will say I am interested in, well, first I have to select my province, Ontario. And then I can go in and type in my city, Ottawa. And then I have to click on Ottawa so that it goes into my selected box. So I've selected Ottawa and I've selected restaurants. And now what I need to do is click on the green view results button. And that opens up all of the restaurants in Ottawa. There's 1600 results, so there's a lot. Um, and uh, you can download these to an Excel file if you want. Um, if you want more in information on any of these businesses, um, you just click on the name of the, the, uh, the restaurant. So I'll click on this one, Agave Grill. And then I get the address, the phone number. Sometimes there's a website. Uh, this is just uh, their, um, their industry, the industry that they're in, their NAICS code. Then you get information like how many employees they have, how much uh, they do in sales, uh, what their credit rating is. So it gives you a little bit of information on that business. Um, it also gives you the name of their management. So who their owner is, who their executives are, um, will be listed here. So in this case, we have an owner. And then how much they spend, just a wide, just a range of their spending on various um, parts of their business. And then um, at the very bottom, you'll have nearby businesses. You can open that up. And that really just shows you what businesses are right beside them, address-wise. And then their competitors report will just uh, list a list of businesses that are their competitors. So this is a good source of information when you're researching your competitors uh, to find out a little bit about them, like how big they are, how much they do in sales. So it doesn't give you a ton of information, but it gives you a little bit of something to work with. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, you could use it also for searching for your customers if you're a business to business as well. Um, and having the name of the executive or owner is also helpful as well if you're, if you're going to be approaching um, someone at that company. So that's how you use uh, Reference Canada. The one other thing I did not mention with Reference Canada is uh, on the results list here, uh, you'll see some V's and some U's. V means that the information was verified by the directory. So the directory has contacted this company and they verified the information they have. U means it's unverified. So they were unsuccessful in reaching that company and uh, verifying that the, what the information is, that it is correct. So just to know that, that when you're looking at an unverified company, um, that the information may not be 100% correct. Um, okay, so that was Reference Canada. We'll just go to the next. Uh, I'm going to go back to my slides now. Which is right here. Okay, so the next uh, uh, online database I want to show you that the Ottawa Public Library subscribes to is Gale eBooks. And what's um, 
uh, good about Gale eBooks is they have given you access to something called the Business Plans Handbook. So if you're writing a business plan, uh, you can get an example of business plans um, uh, through this site. So we're going to go, I'm going to click on the link that I have at the bottom of the screen here. And we'll go to that site. So let me share that screen with you. Okay. Okay, is it is it up now, the Gale eBooks? Yes. Wonderful. So I'm gonna click on this blue link here, Gale eBooks. Again, you would have have to put in a library card number uh, to gain access to this um, but it'll open up this page and then you'll see it, there's all kinds of reference books that are in Gale ebooks but the one that we're interested in is really the, the business plans handbook here it comes up it's the first one in the list so what you need to do is just click on it and uh, the business plans handbook opens up and then you can see there's multiple volumes to this. So it started way back in 1993 with volume one and we're now at volume 47 in 2020. So there are business plans in here all dating all the way back to 1993. Um, the business plans are real life actual businesses and it actually says it here, they're actual business plans. Um, um, compiled by aimed at entrepreneurs seeking funding for small business. Um, so uh, these are all of these plans also have been successful in getting loans um, from banks or whatever investors, but um, uh, so they are good business plans. So they, so you know that the business plans in here are, are quality business plans. So what I, do when I'm searching for a business plan is you can search in this big search box here, but I tend not to do that. I like to search within series box here. The reason is if you search in this big search box here, it's going to search all of the Gale eBooks, um, which are all kinds of eBooks on different topics. And you get a lot of hits that are just not relevant to what you're looking for. But when you search within the series, it's only going to search in the business plans handbook. So I always restrict my search to search within series. So let's say I'm looking to open a bakery. I will type in bakery to see what kind of business plans there are for bakeries. We'll search that. And I get a couple of hits here. So a specialty bakery. And uh, always look at the date, because uh, as you I mentioned earlier, it, these go back to 1993. So you want to be aware of how old the business plan is that you're looking at. So this one's from 2011. There's a bread bakery business plan here from 2017. Another bread bakery from 1998, so that's fairly old. Uh, Gluten-free bakery, 2015. A specialty bakery, that's a cup bakery and so on. There's quite a few bakeries listed in here. Um, so I'll, if I want to look at the specialty bakery, let's say, I'll just click on it and it will just open up the business plan and I can just read through it. So here it is here. They give you the whole business plan um, from the introduction, the management summary, their products and services, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, their mission statement, their goals and objectives, uh, their customer base. So when you're writing a business plan, this can help give you an idea of how to structure your business plan, the different topics that you may want to cover in your business plan, how other companies have done their business plan. Um, and it may give you some ideas as well as how different uh, companies uh, market their services. It's sometimes may give you some ideas for your own business um, that might be interesting. So it's definitely worth a look to, even though you may not be writing a formal business plan, it might give you some ideas um, to have a look at it, to see how other companies have structured their businesses that are similar to yours. Okay.
So that is the um, business plans handbook. I'm going to go back to my slides. Okay, and the next one I have is um, this resource here is called Press Reader. Uh, Press Reader we subscribe to at the library. It's a online database of newspapers from around the world and in multiple languages. So not only in English or French, but multiple languages from around the world. Um, you'll find all of the major Canadian newspapers in here. Um, U.S. newspapers, uh, international. Um, so it is mainly newspapers, but they do have some magazines as well. Um, and uh, I have uh, up on my screen here just an example of some business magazines that you can find in here as well. Um, so this is a good resource to keep up with uh, news. And News is so important when you're doing market research, keeping up with your industry, keeping up with what's happening in the world and how it could possibly affect business um, and your own business and, and um, your industry. Um, just reading is, is, is just so important, uh, keeping up with news. So that's just one source that you can use that the library offers um, is this business uh, is this uh, database called press reader uh, we also have other magazine uh, databases as well one is called flipster and another one is called rb digital with more access to other magazines and you can find business magazines there as well uh, i just don't have a slide for it but it's all on our website. You just go to our website um, and explore online resources and you will find it all there. Um, another one I'd like to point out is a, something called Canadian Newsstand. This is also a news database that the library subscribes to. Um, so when you are, you same thing, you know, keeping up with your industry, reading news, on your industry so when you're doing market research you want to learn as much as you can about your industry and where it's going and what the trends are and you do this uh, through reading of trade journals um, magazine articles newspaper articles and this Canadian newsstand that I have up on the screen here is a newspaper database so when you're looking for articles on specific topics so press reader is more of a that one was to give you the daily newspapers so it's not a topic specific it's just more for browsing and daily reading of the daily news whereas in canadian newsstand you can actually research so canadian newsstand have the articles going back to the 1980s newspaper articles that go back that far as well as up-to-date articles from um, currently from from I think yesterday is the most recent they would have yesterday's articles it covers all the major Canadian newspapers in here um, you just search you know whatever it is whatever topic you're interested in in the search box and you will get a list of articles I always recommend filtering by date so you'll see on my slide here publication date you want to filter and make sure you're getting articles that are current. Uh, so for example, the last 12 months, you may want to only look at articles in the last year or the last five years, where you can do a custom date range. You can filter by, the, maybe, maybe you only want to see articles in the last six months, you can put that in, whatever date range you're interested in. So definitely make sure you filter your results, otherwise you'll get thousands of hits that are um, some that may be so old that they're, they're not no longer relevant unless you're doing historical research um, but yeah so let's say you want you know trends in um, you know take the bakery example for example you want to find out what's happening with bakeries um, in the last year you can search articles on you can search your keywords bakery industry and see what comes up um, an example here in our, um, on our slide here is customer, 
cut we search customer engagement. So if you're interested in learning more about customer engagement, you can search any topic you want in these. And it doesn't even have to be just business, just it will search any topics um, that have appeared in newspapers um, uh, over back to the 1980s. So that is the Canadian newsstand and I have the link here on the bottom that you can follow. And um, that brings us to the end. So um, as I mentioned, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about today, um, you can always email the library, um, infoservice at biblioottawalibrary.ca, or you can give us a call. Um, if you email us, just email your question. If it's um, a general question, they will answer it. If it's a business specific question, quite detailed, they will forward it on to me. So I will get that and I will get back to you. Uh, if it's not me, it may be one of our bus other business librarians, uh, depending on who is uh, working. But uh, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. And as I said, if you've got some market research questions you have for your specific business, you can send them along to that uh, email address, info service, and uh, they will forward it on to me. Uh, and I will get back to you with that answer. And I believe uh, Kavi and Ayat, you will be sending the slides to the participants at the end of the session? Uh, yes, we will. Yeah. Uh, slides and um, the handouts that you yes. use, yeah. Yeah, so you will get the slides with all the links in them um, mm -hmm. there. And I also, um, you'll be getting also a handout. I have a French and an English version of that handout, which um, talks about in that handout, just really is just a reiteration of my slides. Um, it has all, all the, the different points that we talked about for primary market research as well as a lot of the sources that we talked about today for secondary market research. But there may be some extra, little extras in there that you might want to look at in the, in the handout. Um, okay. But you should have access to everything through the slides and the links are there. So I'm open to questions now if anybody has any questions. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, thank you for great uh, presentation it was really comprehensive and a lot of information to it uh, about the Linda I was thinking that uh, if I just sign in to the library website can it go to the Linda or I, I'm, I didn't get it if you explain it sorry oh yes so uh, you do have to go to the library website to get access to Linda if you just Google Lynda.com and you try to gain access that way, um, they're going to ask you to pay a monthly subscription fee. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's why I couldn't do it. Do it that way. So go to the library's website, which is biblioottawalibrary.ca. So as you see it on my slide um, in the email address, biblioottawalibrary.ca, go to our website and click on uh, Browse the browse tab and in that browse tab there should be something called online resources mm -hmm. and that will open up uh, a menu or a list of all of our online resources and we have a lot and it's an alphabetical list just keep scrolling down it's a long list um, and then part way through when you get to L you'll find lynda.com there mm -hmm. click on it and you do need a library card though so you yes. will have to log in with your library card number. Um, and the first time you use it, you'll just have to create an account. And once you've created an account, uh, you're good to go. And it's just, it's very simple to create an account. It's, they just want your email address, I, I believe is all. I do have a library card, but I'm not sure if it's expired or not. Uh, I'm just wondering, can you do it online? You cannot uh, do it online, but you can, I believe right now you're able to phone in and renew it by phone. Oh, that's good. Or you can come in in person. Okay. So you. normally you would have had to come in in person to do it, but I think because of COVID, they're now doing it uh, over the phone. Yeah, and I also have one more question. It just, uh, I'm not sure if uh, you covered that or no, but just maybe you have some information. If I'm looking for the list of grants, especially for the innovation, you know, company, I'm sure there are some 
out there. But if uh, I'm, I'm looking for like kind of a comprehensive information about it, uh, is something in the library available or no? Not really. Um, the best I would suggest is uh, click on that Innovation, Science and Economic Development website and the link for the grants and financing that I pointed out. Okay. And that's going to lead you to a site um, that the government has put together where you can, it, you'll answer a series of questions and then it will uh, give you a list of grants or financing that would apply to your type of business and your circumstances. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Any other question? Uh, Marlene, uh, I have a question. I remember in the past, the Hadwell Public Library used to have a in, an import export uh, handout. Is that not still available to share with the or Yeah, it's old now. It's yeah. old now. Yeah, we had an import export handout. I can send it to you. I believe it's dated 2015, if I recall. Oh, yeah, it's that, at that time. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it's not been updated. It was a handout that we got from a third party. Um, so it wasn't mm -hmm. actually something we had created. And so that's why it was never really updated. But I can certainly, I have, you know, I can send it to you. It's yeah. just the link may have changed. Okay, yeah, thank you. If you send it to me. Yeah, I'll pass that on to you. Um, and then you can have a look at it and see. And one more question. In uh, primary market research, what is the um, acceptable response rate and how many sample uh, we need to have to have a uh, reliable research? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't have a, an answer for that. I don't know. I would recommend that website um, that is in my slide, survey system, I think it's called. Uh, surveysystem.com. Um, it's a very good site. They may tell you there um, the um, what what type of sample size is probably the best. Um, but yeah, I don't know offhand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we have more questions from. Okay, it seems that we don't have. Any more question? Okay. Uh, thank you, Marlene. It was a very informative session. I personally enjoyed the session. I'm sure that the participants enjoy as well. My pleasure. I hope it was useful. <laughs> yes, it was very. Uh, yeah, and if you ever yeah, have any questions, just let me know. Um, and send in uh, for the participants, they can send in their questions. Uh, Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, if uh, you don't have any more question, I mean participant, or you don't want to share anything else, we can now leave. Uh, I, I just have one quick question. Oh yeah, yes. for sure. If we want to, if we want to contact you, Marlene, uh, should we use the email that you provided on the screen and mention your name in it, or uh, do you have a direct email or a direct phone number that we could reach? Yeah, you can uh, directly email me. I can give my email address is basically my name, which is at the. Uh, you'll find it on the first slide. So Marlene dot at biblioottawalibrary.ca. Okay. So it's just the same ex, uh, at, um, you can uh, just put my name with uh, the dot between my first name and last name, and that you can uh, reach me that way. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And it was a great presentation. I really uh, enjoyed it. It was very important. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Have a great evening. Okay. Thank you, everybody, uh, for participating in this uh, session. And uh, we are going to leave this session. Have a great night, everybody.
Thank you. Thank you.